I'm Jill. I'm Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, we, we'd like to share with you our experience of designing and opening uh, a new centre in Kelvin Hall, um, which is dedicated to moving image and uh, uh, digital collections, and explain how, how we went about that and how it's engaged with new audiences and um, uh, in different ways and how it led to someone saying this about our organisation and our centre. But just a, a little bit of background about uh, the National Library. Um, it's been collecting for more than 300 years now and is a legal deposit library, which if you know about that means that we get a copy of every book, article, uh, journal that uh, is, is published in the UK. And it's centred in Edinburgh, and that's a lot of books, an awful lot of books. But now we have a centre in Glasgow, and there's no books. And uh, that's where our Moving Image Archive is, that uh, Ruth is the manager of. And uh, also we have uh, access to our digital collections there. I'm just going to go back. The slide is missing. <laughs> so just a little bit about those, those collections. First, uh, firstly, the, the digital collections. It's more than 10 million, mostly from non-print legal deposit. Uh, we're, I'm done. I'm the digital access man manager. I'm done with the books, so now we get things uh, digitally. Uh, but a huge collection of digital resources as well. Uh, we have digitised over 200,000 maps, huge numbers of photographs, uh, uh, moving image as well. And, and the moving image archive is an extraordinary collection. Um, for me as a librarian, I just... I just find it amazing. It shows our Scottish life, um, how we work, how we play, what we're like at home, in a way that is just not possible with, with books. I find it extraordinary to, to work with Ruth on it. It's full of all sorts of things, um, documentaries, it's uh, film, video, home movies, broadcasts, a, a huge range, uh, a diverse range of uh, moving image. This is the Stone Age. <laughs> This is, until very recently, this is where the Moving Image Archive was, on an industrial estate, out near Glasgow Airport, and you got a special prize if you could find your way to it. <laughs> uh, I, on going there during this project, got lost many times trying, trying to get to uh, Ruth's office. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not, it wasn't fit for purpose, it was, it was an interim place. Um, uh, while waiting for funding for uh, a, a new centre. And, and over there, that was the viewing facilities. That was, that was it. There was really no public space there. But then this opportunity came about five, five or six years ago, I think. Um, and this is, this is the Kelvin Hall in Glasgow. This is, a, this is a building that's close to the heart of all Glaswegians. When I was a wee girl, I went to the fun fair here and the circus. Um, uh, there was a transport museum in there. People would go and visit the transport museum, many shows and concerts. And also there was a, a short track um, 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 athletics uh, uh, stadium inside it as well. And it was going for refurbishment and we uh, participated in the project for the refurbishment of Kelvin Hall, along with um, uh, two other partners. The lead partner was Glasgow Life, that's the city council, basically, of Glasgow, and the Hunterian, which is part of Glasgow University's Museum of Glasgow University. And it was a great opportunity to work in partnership, um, and, and it was to build a facility for the National Library, its moving image archive and its digital collections, uh, a, a storage facility for the Hunterian and teaching uh, uh, places and a sports centre. Kind of strange partnership. So we, we, had, uh, we had a vision, I think it's fair to say it was Ruth's vision for the centre. Um, uh, a, a, a collaborative space, a comfortable space for people to come and work with, with and see moving, moving image. So we had this vision, but we weren't quite sure how to realise it. Um, I mean, I'm a librarian, Ruth's a moving image expert. Uh, the place is full of librarians. We didn't really know how to design a space like that. Um, so we 
got in a bunch of experts. We had an exhibition design company uh, to help us with the general feel and theme and layout of the centre. We had a most amazing audiovisual technology consultant. Uh, we couldn't have done anything without, without them. A brilliant AV design and build team and also digital designers as well. And working with them, that was how we were able to uh, uh, develop the centre. So, of course, it starts off, this is about 12 months out uh, from it opening as a building site. And that wall at the back there where it says Firex, it's a very important wall. We had to have that wall strengthened, and you'll see later why that was a very important wall. So we started the physical build of the centre, and then we were working with the designers, prototyping uh, um, uh, the, the digital things that we were building. So this is a prototype of a, a, a video wall um, uh, in a shed out uh, in, in West Lothian. Uh, we also had uh, prototypes built of um, uh, a curated application that showcased our, our, our film. So we were going through an iterative process to design the centre and, and the facilities within it. And this is my favourite bit because I'm a systems librarian. <laughs> There's a lot of tech behind the scenes, a huge amount. In, in the centre, there is a 12 panel, a huge 12 panel video screen. And I think I can see it. It has a pr video processor that processes 6 million pixels a second. It's amazing. Uh, so there's this amazing uh, video wall. There are eight uh, multi-touch 25-inch uh, PCs for accessing a digital application. Uh, there is digital screens uh, in uh, two viewing theatres uh, and a, a huge range of facilities for uh, professionals as well to come in. But it's not about the tech. The tech is just the thing that enables um, uh, um, uh, access to the content. And, and something too about the, the technology behind that, it, it's, it's designed so it can deliver at very, very high speed so that you can truly see the quality of the film. It delivers uh, uh, at a, a speed that is, is better than other uh, film archives that we, that we know of. We worked with the designers. This is a, a, a real touchy-feely place where people can uh, look at the collections of the library, pull out drawers, touch... Um, uh, facsimiles of rare, ma uh, rare manuscripts and books. Um, and this is the an area where people can get a feel for the whole breadth of the collection, including those items that uh, are located out, out in Edinburgh. And then we came towards the final installation, a fraught few weeks, uh, as we were rushing towards uh, um, opening the centre. And then it was this opening day. The 16th of September last year, much stress, much money spent, much uh, angst, uh, and we opened our, uh, our centre to the public on the 16th of September, but we didn't know if it would work. We'd put all of that effort in, and we had no idea if it was going to be successful. Uh, and we didn't know if we would see new audiences or if the centre would even, even be used. I'll pass over to Ruth, <laughs> who will hopefully explain. Thank you. Well, as Jill has described all the kind of technical and setup, I'm going to really give you the whistle stop tour of, of what we've achieved uh, since opening day and did it work. So, um, Jill had uh, previously, said, previously said about some of the items in the new access centre. And if you think back to that slide um, in Hillington Park, where our nearest neighbours were carpet warehouses. We've come an incredibly long way, hence the Stone Age to NASA. And you can see in this image here some of the areas in the centre. We have the kind of collections showcase area at the top there, where we've got items across the National Library of Scotland. We also have films, and that's all themed on um, things like place, home, fun, and work. So really kind of basic concepts to, to bring memory and um, thinking so people can interact with the collections in different ways and remember things, learn things, and just have that, that good interaction. Um, you can also see here is our curated themed um, screens, and they're really the, the kind of highlights of the film collection and dipping in. So if you haven't got much time, 
and you're coming into the centre for the first time with your coffee, you can bring your coffee in, that's another good concept, um, you can sit down and just browse. And that's, I kind of call that the top ten of the film archive because it's very um, intuitive and you can just come in and you can have a quick um, look at the collections. I think one thing to quickly highlight is that we're at the back of the building. You have to come down a very long corridor to reach us. And hence, the video wall is a really important part of drawing people down that corridor. You also have to walk past the gym on the way to the corridor. Um, and having a partner that's sport in the building is, is quite interesting, that sport and heritage thing. Yes, we do get people in Lycra coming in as well, which is audience development at its best. Um, so we also have um, a kind of uh, a nice high-tech screening room there. Um, and various lovely comfy seats there that you can kind of immerse yourself in the collections. We also have some nice um, museum pieces as well to remind you of the old days of film. So the new centre has enabled us to do a lot of different things that we couldn't do in Hillington Park next to the carpet warehouses, funnily enough. Um, we did do events before, but it was always in association, in association with another partner. So what we were able to do was events on our own premises, we also had access to the auditorium that the Hunterian um, look after. So we've been able to do things like curated screenings. We've done one on the archaeology of film um, from one of our curators who likes to, as he says, trowel off the layers of history on a film. Who's in it? Who, you know, where is it located? What era? All those kinds of things. We've done screenings on um, the steamers that go down the Clyde, so holidays in Scotland. And we're doing a lovely uh, screening on Christmas films coming up. Uh, soon. We're also doing author talks in the building. Obviously, books you know, are still uh, with us and very much discussed, um, digital ones too. So we also do talks um, on that. And we recent um, talks, we've had Hugh Dan McClellan talking about the history of shinty, which is uh, a good old Scottish sport that's a bit like lacrosse and, I guess, um, hockey, kind of. It's a bit vicious, I think. But anyway, um, we've also been able to do family events, so we've done some workshops on things like circus skills, which was in association with the Glasgow Museums, and it was the Festival of Museums, and we were looking at the circus. Kelvin Hall um, hosted the circus during its, its long life, and people have a real connection to that building, especially if coming to the circus and the fun fairs. We did some juggling, and we did animation with um, young people with cutouts and doing kind of, you know, tight rope walking, tight, tight rope walking, as you do. Um, so really kind of being able to engage with new audiences as well. We also set up a monthly film club called Synesthesia. I managed to say that. That's good. Which our access team run and curate too. And we've also set up a new kind of workshop called Using Film for Family History to try and engage people, mostly gene genealogists, but anyone that's looking at their local or family history to use film as a medium and a historical resource. People often... Um, don't always engage with that as much as they could do. And also um, film education, coming to learning. So um, part of our learning program is to you know, talk about the moving image, how to read the moving image, um, and we do a lot of um, workshops and CPD with teachers to let them know about the collections and how they can interact with the collections. Um, and also we do CPD with Glasgow Museum, so you get to see a film and you get to have an object as well, and that's quite a nice kind of new, new uh, collaboration that we've been doing, which the building has allowed us to do. We've also worked with young people like the Prince's Trust, filmmaking projects, um, local history groups, and we've been running a course with the University of Strathclyde on genealogy for lifelong learners as well. And I think this side kind of sums up the centre for me because that's exactly what it is. It engages everybody. You can come in, you can interact, you can play with stuff. Um, it's fun. It's an intergenerational sp space where you can bring in the, the little ones. Um, and we often have um, mums and dads and grandparents actually bringing in the slightly older um, children while the little ones go to the sports facilities and they're doing some class and they'll come in and they'll watch films together. Um, so it really does sharing memories, sharing histories and you know, connecting people together. And I think the technology that Jill was talking about enables that. It's brilliant, but it actually enables that kind of discovery and enjoyment for all. Fun. <laughs> and I love this slide um, because it does show um, you know, young person engaging with the collections there. And the centre is all about self-discovery as well. It's there for people to come in and have a go at 
press buttons, pull out drawers, um, and just kind of engage in a really fun way. Community, obviously that's really important. We've been able to bring together new communities in this space, and we're working both in the space and in the communities themselves to, to look at opportunities for developing um, projects and learning and um, sharing knowledge. Um, for example, we've got an image here of the Govan Choir, and this was a project we did um, using film and singing uh, to look at the history of Govan. Um, and that was a really um, interesting project as well, kind of looking at um, some intergenerational work too. Um, we also host group, group visits for people with disabilities and hard of hearing and dementia as well. And most of our team in the centre are trained dementia friends as well. So we, we kind of have that awareness to look out for, for when people are coming into, coming into the building. Um, and also we get lots of local history groups coming in to look at their films of their local community and their local streets. Professionals. Now, this kind of... Jill kind of talked about a little bit about this, but we also have... We've got two lots of professionals here. We have, the obviously, the researchers and the TV broadcasters that come in and look at the collections for use in TV um, productions. Um, and that's, that's a really important part of what we do. But we're also, through learning and engagement, training the new professionals... We recently just set up a film competition um, with the Scottish Youth Film Festival um, for, to make a little one-minute film of called What Does Scotland Mean to Me? And that's both as a, an outreach project but also to bring in new content to the archive about what young people are feeling about their um, stories at the moment as well. So we've just launched that and I'm looking forward to seeing what comes in on that too. And you'll see some of the old analog viewing equipment here. We, that's a Steenbeck machine for viewing 16 millimeter film. And we're trialing the use of um, people bringing in their own collections to view on that. Um, it's quite quite interesting one, because you have to make sure that they haven't got a film that they've got in their attic that's full of fungus and mold and you know nice stuff like that. So there's quite a few things to be thought about when we're opening up access to that. So professionals of today and professionals of the future. Um, another thing I think is really key about the centre is cross-collection um, research. And we've got kind of several images there. We've got um, some text from a newspaper. We've got a map. And we've got, that is actually a still from a film image. And they're all looking at a cinema in Glasgow. So one is from um, a film from 1921 of the Grosvenor Cinema on Byers Road. And then we've got a map of where the Grosvenor Cinema was located on Byers Road. And then we have... Uh, an extract from um, the Herald newspaper from 1922 of the power of cinema and cinema education. So it's a space where you can look at... The moving image archive is really visual, but you can also then go back to the other digital collections to contextualise what you're looking at and kind of provide a, a bigger um, view. So... <laughs> From 60 to 22,000, that feels like the speed we did the project, but it's actually um, the statistics. Um, 60 people was what we used to have at Hellington Park um, per year coming to see the film collections in that little room with that video player. In the first year of opening, we've had 22,000 through the door, um, which I think proves a point of, yes, it was successful, um, and I think while stats are wonderful and we all need them for our boards and our funders, what I think sticks in mind for me is a personal story that came to us just recently. Um, a chap was in the gym. He's a university lecturer, had gone to the gym, and literally um, he was putting on his, um, his uh, trainers, and a friend of his had, come into, had recently come out of our centre and said to him, I've just seen a film with your dad in it in the Moving Image Archive in the National Library come and see. Took him down the corridor and he discovered this film of his father who was in the Communist Party. He knew he was actually in the Communist Party but he didn't know that he played the flute in the Communist Party band. And he discovered this in the Moving Image Archive and was so delighted um, that it's had such an effect on him. And to me that story is just as important as stats. You know, is the impact that we're having on people and communities and stories and, um, and I think that's what the, the centre is. It's a place to discover um, and enjoy.
Okay, thank you.